In a less traditional place across town in the A. Leo Weil School, an experiment is underway. The experiment is called team teaching. Its excellence lies in its vast complexity. Here, in a first grade, it can be seen most clearly. I'm going to ask team one to stand nicely and pass quietly for your grouping over here. In the Wild School, there are five first grade classes. Each is divided into three groups along lines of academic ability. This is no different from what is done in many traditional schools, but this is very different. The various groups from the various rooms are moved together in a variety of patterns to achieve better teaching and learning. Because most teachers do some things better than others, because most students learn some things more easily than others, team teaching seeks to match up the skills of the teachers and the learners. In this instance, Half of all the first graders are going to the auditorium to hear a lecture. The other half remain in their five different classrooms, concentrating on other subjects in which they need extra work or in which they are above average. The result is six classes. One is very large and five are now very small, each being taught at a specific level. Good morning, boys and girls. The same auditorium lecture on health and food will be repeated for those who remained in their classrooms. The teacher, Mrs. Amelia Arthur, is the team leader of the first grade. Oh, Shirley, come on up and take the first question and see if you're smart enough to be able to read it. Did you have a good breakfast? Good reading, Shirley. Did you? What did you have for breakfast? I had eggs, sausages, and grits and milk. Oh, that was a good breakfast, wasn't it? Reginald, what about you? Now stand up nice and straight, Reginald. I had um, a glass of milk, some cereal, toast, and I had bacon and eggs, and I had some um, pancakes and, um, and a jelly sandwich. Oh, you were really hungry this morning, but I'm glad you ate... The class ordinarily taught by the teacher giving this group lecture is taken over by a teaching intern. Now, now, today we're going to test, see how... She is a student from a nearby college doing her student teaching here. Yes. She has full responsibility for the class. Here's a word. Can you tell me what this word is? Michelle, let's see if you can tell me what it is. Michelle, what is that word? Him. Him. Now, listen to me say it. Him. Across the hall, another teacher instructs a group that needs special help in basic arithmetic. Because the bulk of her class is in the auditorium, she has a small group to work with, and the instruction can be highly concentrated. Jeffrey, as I point to them, you count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's right. Two and five are how many? Seven. Good for you. This is a piece of paper. In another classroom, a small group of children works on a science lesson. These, an above average accelerated group, are receiving the special kind of attention they need. They would never get it in a traditional school. Will it pick a paper? Will it? No. Capital N. Oh. This is Renita. On the other side of the room, another group works at painting with the help of what is called a team mother. She is an important person, an exclusive part of the team teaching program. She is not a teacher. Her responsibilities include all activities except instruction. She takes care of all the machines. She passes out clay, mixes paint, 
distributes supplies, takes care of all small emergencies. Well, now David's having a problem. Where's your sponge, David? You should have had a sponge. Will you borrow Renita's sponge, please? Renita, will you lend David your sponge? Please. Please, Renita. Be nice. Renita, please. Since she must be shared among five classes, she could use five hands. Well, that would be one period a day we can work on this remedial work. Anybody would like to The complications of team teaching dictate that once a week, the team meets as a team. This is unique to team teaching, and it is vital. Under the guidance of the team leader, who is one of the teachers, the complex schedule is worked out. The problems of specific students are discussed, and the important assignment of teaching remedial work is made. Now, who would like to take the remedial arithmetic? Okay, I'll put you down. That's one, oh, four. So that'll be fine. When a time for the remedial lesson has been decided and a teacher selected, a child is sent around to fetch other children who also need the lesson. What do you think Sally's saying to Dick Dorothy? She might be saying, look. All right, Rita, you go to Mrs. Losh's room. These special remedial classes are worked into the regular daily routine and might take place anywhere. In this instance, under a stairway in the basement. So now, Peter and Cottontail hop away. Just take your seats, girl. And they go get some. With their individual skills recognized, team teachers are showing more enthusiasm for their work. And of course, the children benefit. Team teaching is a new idea. It's experimental. Classes such as this are the exception. In most schools, the old way prevails. Were, were now, were, could, could, would. Okay. In most schools, the old way provides excellence only when the teacher demands it and supplies it. Sometimes, in some classrooms, the priceless ingredient can be found. The single excellent teacher. When, where, there. Because the future is great for Janet. She has uh, the ability, I'm sure, to do anything that she would yeah. like to do. Potentialities are almost done. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Dominic, too, since we're coming to the end of the school term. Have you seen some improvements or changes in Dominic? Yes, I think he's improving a great deal. He seems to have more desire to learn to read. He uh, uh, volunteers in all his classes to some extent. He doesn't always have the, exactly the right answers. He's been coming early in the morning and getting special help in reading and I think it is certainly showing up in the rest of his work. His spelling is even improving. The fact that he has come every morning, I don't think he's missed a morning since I've had him the first of the year, shows that his interest, I think, is being held and he is really wants to learn. Morning, Dominic. Good morning. Put your books down and go to the board and let's see what we can do with these words and phonics. See if you can find a word with one vowel in it. Fun. Fun. What kind of a vowel sound do you expect to hear in that word? Short Q. Why? Because when there's one vowel in a word or syllable, it's usually short, less, it's usually long, it's set. No, usually it's short. Unless it comes at the end. Unless it comes at the end. Any other short vowel sounds? The first word in the second column. You know that word? No. Swift. Say it. Swift. You're a baseball player, you throw a swift ball. What kind of a ball is a swift ball? Fast. A fast ball. It's very good. What are you going to do after school today? Play baseball. Play baseball. Where do you play? In the schoolyard. Oh, do you? Who do you play with? Ro Robin, Patsy, Michael. Tell me about the game. Well, me and Patsy and Michael were g going d going down square to play baseball, and 
and and Patsy was up fir first. What happened? He hit a he hit he hit a grounder and and I caught it and I, and I threw it to first. And he was what? Out. He was out. Anything else happen? What happened when you got up to bat? Hmm? I had a pop-up. Patsy got it. Patsy caught it. Do you feel that uh, in reading now, do you feel that you're getting something out of your reading? Yes. You know, in uh, next month, very soon now, we're going to have these end of the term tests. And it's going to be difficult for you unless you can read the directions. So you know, Dominic, we've got to work very hard. What's the next word? 